Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to implement a very commonly asked form feature. We have received several requests for this at the beginning of the recording of this course. We are going to be introducing a new form control, the selection dropdown, but we're going to be populating it with server-side content. So we are going to be adding to our form a category selection box that is going to allow us to select if the course is a beginner course, an advanced course, an intermediate course, etc. So all of those categories are going to come from a backend call. The first thing that we are going to do is to call the backend and retrieve the data that we need to fill in in our selection dropdown. So for that we are going to be defining here a new observable at the level of our component that we are going to call course categories. This observable is going to be emitting a list of course categories. Let's quickly define here at the level of this component a course category. So the course category is going to have a couple of fields only. We are going to have the code which is going to be a string and we are going to have also a description for the category. So the code is going to be the value selected whenever the user selects a value in the dropdown and the description is going to be the value displayed to the user. Let's then use this new course category type definition here in our observable and the observable is going to be emitting an array of course categories. Let's now fill in a value for this observable here on ng on init. We are going to fill in this observable by using the courses service, which allows us to access our backend. And we're going to be calling here the find course categories method. This is going to return a list of categories from the backend. Now that we have an observable available, let's see how can we apply these backend values here to our template. Let's start by adding here a new material form field. This material form field will contain our drop down that we're going to be implementing using the Angular Material Select component. Let's give this drop down a placeholder and let's fill in the selection options. If the options would be predefined, we could hard code them here in our template. For example, we could add here the option uh, beginner intermediate, advanced, etc. And we could define multiple values here for each option. So the value is going to be what the selection box will emit whenever the user selects a value from the dropdown. So we could give here, for example, a selection value of beginner, all caps, while we display here to the user a text string, which is different than the code, and that it could even be in another language. So each material option in our select dropdowns needs a value, which is going to be the form value, and it also needs a description. We could have here multiple options available, for example, an advanced option as well. In our case, however, we are not going to hard code the options here in our template because the multiple options are coming from the backend via the course categories observable. Let's then loop through the multiple options available. For that, we're going to be using here the ng container directive. And here we are going to be looping through the multiple options using ng4. Let's define here a category local variable, and we want to iterate through the multiple types of categories. We are going to obtain the list of categories via the course categories observable. Let's subscribe to it using the Angular core async pipe. So now we have here the categories available. Let's go ahead and fill in the multiple options. So the description of each option is going to come here from the category description property. And the value of each option is going to come from the category code property. And with this, we have displayed the multiple backend options to the user. So now all we have to do is to link this material select component to a form property. Let's then add a new form field here in our form model. Let's add here, for example, a category field and let's add a couple of validators to it. Let's also add the initial value which is going to be the value beginner. So we need to set in here the code that we need to pass to our material option. And let's say that this is a mandatory field. So let's apply here as usual the required validator. 
Now all we have to do is to link this material select component to the form control by using the form control name directive and let's apply here the category property. And with this our new form field is ready so let's go ahead and try it out. So here we have the new category dropdown with the multiple values available that we loaded from the backend. And whenever we select one of the values, we can see here that the category property of the form value is getting updated according to what we have selected. So as we can see, everything is working as expected. And with this, we have completed here our form on step one. Let's now move on to step two, where we are going to be introducing a couple more commonly needed form controls. We're going to talk about radio groups, we're going to talk about numeric inputs, and we're going to talk about selection of date ranges. From there, we're going to dive into the most advanced use cases, such as nested form groups, custom components, and much more.